Sean's imprisonment had on his family. Now, when we do something good, it has a good effect and it spreads happiness, doesn't it? But if we do something bad, what does it do? Negative it has a negative effect, doesn't it? And it spreads misery. And that's what, that's what Sean's imprisonment did. It made, it made us miserable. So I want you to think about the effect that what you do in life has on the people around you, your family, your friends, most of all your family. Um, like Sean said, I, had a, I did suffer a nervous breakdown. When I, first, when I first found out about Sean, I got a telephone call from um, his aunt in America. So, uh, me and his sister were just sat on the couch, I think we were watching Coronation Street, just having a cup of tea, quite happy. The telephone rings and his aunt uh, says, I, says, I don't know how to tell you this, but Sean's been arrested on uh, serious drug charges and um, he's been taken to uh, Madison Street. Was it Madison Street? Yeah. Prison. One of the toughest prisons. I just couldn't believe it. I was just... You know, I just couldn't believe what she'd said. I was just in total shock. And I turned to Karen and said, Sean's been arrested on drug charges and he's in Madison Street. And then I just carried on talking to his sister as though nothing had happened. And I was asking her how her family were, you know, because I was in such shock. It hadn't registered within my brain what had happened. Anyway, when I put the phone down, I turned to Karen and we both just... We started laughing hysterically. It was the weirdest thing, and then we burst into tears, and you know, the reality of it. And uh, when his dad came home from work, then we were just dreading telling him, and he, um, we saw his car pull up, and we thought, oh God, no. And when we told him, he was devastated, and uh, tried to ring the prison to find out more information. Anyway, we found out, and we, we, we knew we found out what his charges were, but I was so ashamed, I was still in a state of shock. <clears throat> I worked at a college, I worked at um, Riverside, it was Holton College then, and I was so ashamed I didn't tell anybody who I worked with. And I had my husband and my daughter both banned from telling anybody. I was so... I was thinking of myself really then more, you know, I was so embarrassed at the, at the thoughts of, uh, of anybody finding out, which is crazy really because I was a, I, I'm a psychology teacher, so I know about, you know, keeping things inside you isn't good, is it? You know, if you have a problem, you've got to tell people because that's, and then it gets out, out of your system. But anyway, I kept this secret. I was afraid that people would throw bricks through the window and paint drug dealers on the walls. Um, I thought it would be in all the newspapers. I'd go into the news, local newspaper shop and I'd sort of edge in like this, looking, you know, looking at the papers to see if we were in the headlines. I was so, so, so afraid and so ashamed. I didn't even tell my sister or my best friend um, for months. And wrong with me, my there was something wrong with me, my colleagues, but um, but they didn't know. They had no idea. I mean, they'd heard about how well Sean was doing in America. They never imagined that he'd been arrested on drug charges as a drugs kingpin. And um, anyway, one day I just broke down, and like Sean related the tale before, there was some ESOL uh, foreign students in. And it was just after it had been in, we'd seen it on the internet, the article on the internet. And I just started running around the car, running around the room, shouting, everybody knows, they all know, pointing at them. I must have thought I'd gone mad, completely mad, because they didn't know what it was. Anyway, I eventually settled down and went home. And after that, I was on medication, and I, and I still am on and off. So, the, yeah. So uh, Sean's sister as well had to have counselling. Um, gradually we told everybody, 
be, uh, after, after I'd told people at work and I, I didn't lose my job, which is what I thought I would do, I thought everyone would turn against me. But everybody knew the family and they knew Sean growing up and everybody accepted it and was very supportive. Um, so, so, so there was no problem there. But uh, it, it was still inside me and we, we visited him every year and going to visit him in America. We'd, ever since he'd been to America, we visited him and, and we went to his lovely house with his pool and had a wonderful time. So can you imagine the contrast going to visit him knowing that you were going to go into a maximum security prison where you were going to be speaking to your son through, uh, through plexiglass. You couldn't even hold his hand or give him a hug. Uh, it was it was just horrific, but sh I must say though, that Sean committed a crime. It's not just this; these talks aren't just a, a whinge about the bad conditions in Sheriff Joe's prison. Sean committed a crime. He chose to take drugs. If you cho choose to go down that path, you deserve punishment, and. He was punished, but you don't deserve the inhuman conditions that, uh, well, you've seen for yourself, haven't you? The cockroach, cockroaches crawling on you, and um, no air conditioning and 140 degree heat, and people being murdered all around you. But imagine how it felt for me, or for his family, knowing that these things were going on. Um, I wrote to Amnesty International, I wrote all over the place about the conditions, but there was nothing they could do because Sheriff Joe is a democratically elected sheriff. Over there, they elect the <coughs> sheriff. Like, it's like us voting for who we want to be the police commissioner here. And because he gets voted in every year, um, there's nothing anybody can do from the outside. Um, and people think he's good because he's tough on crime, but... You see, you get young people going in there on marijuana charges or drunk driving, and, and they come out as gang members and heroin addicts. You know, so there's no rehabilitation. It's, um, it's, it's just not good. I think there's more rehabilitation goes on here, and I don't think the conditions are so bad here. But I think there is, in adult prisons, there are still a lot of awful things go on. So, um, so, so, so you need to think, think of your parents and think of your family before you go down, before you go down that track, because they are the ones you hurt. I know it's, it, it's hard, you don't think of your parents. Sean didn't think of us when he was doing all this, but when he got in trouble, all of his friends who were taking drugs with him disappeared, no sign of them. So who did he have to turn to? His mum and dad didn't need to, to help him, and, and, and you'll find that when everybody, when everything else goes wrong, they are there for you. So you have to look after them and think about them when you're making your decisions to take drugs or do um, do, do anything which is against the law. Okay, I'm not going to cry. I cried at the last talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was at a school.